welcome everybody good afternoon good morning depends upon where you are uh, welcome to the webinar series uh, of eam we had uh, uh, one webinar which was very focused for the life sciences uh, last week and this week we are focusing on um, moving from reactive to predictive maintenance with sap intelligent asset management which is also known as iam and today we have jordan gray he is the senior solution engineer with sap and uh, myself shrikant nistane i'm with uh, digital transformation architect with crave infotech and we'll will be jointly presenting how we can help you to move from reactive to predictive and uh, um jordan uh, over to you great thanks for that intro shrikant uh so Quick uh, overview for the topics we're covering today. Again, we're focused on SAP Intelligent Asset Management, and intelligence uh, comes in, in really two forms. It's not just the devices themselves that are getting more intelligent these days. Uh, the processes around those devices also have to be intelligent. So we'll talk about kind of the double meaning of that. Uh, we'll cover just a quick intro to um, what the solution is that we'll be talking about today, predictive maintenance and service. Uh, we'll hop into a quick demo scenario for a live solution demo, and then I'll hand it over to Shrikant for some key takeaways and, and next steps here. Then we'll open it up for a brief Q&A. All right. What we at SAP have seen, and certainly Crave Infotech has seen as well, is this kind of maturity curve across maintenance organizations. Oop, and I've got some, uh, some timings taking me forward here. Let's not do that. We've seen this kind of maturity curve within maintenance organizations, and we've seen this really uh, in, in many industries, asset intensive industries. We've seen customers wanting to move further up the maturity curve as technology is getting simpler and more inexpensive uh, to be able to accomplish some of these condition based and predictive type of um, maintenance processes. We've seen uh, companies wanting to move up the maturity curve because Obviously, the sooner you know about a potential downtime, a potential slowdown, the more that directly translates into lowering the total cost of ownership for an asset, prolonging the lifespan of the asset, keeping production running on schedule, lowering time to repair with better information, with more intelligence, with more insights. So uh, we, we do see companies wanting to move up this curve. Now, as you guys probably know, if you know anything about SAP plant maintenance, as it exists in core SAP ERP, it does a wonderful job with corrective and reactive maintenance, with preventative maintenance, and it can do some things with condition-based maintenance too, in, in the form of counters and measuring points for strategy plans for those preventative maintenance plans, triggering uh, those plans based on a trigger, right, a condition, um, either qualitative or quantitative. But what we've done in the last few years is, is we've productized SAP's approach to predictive maintenance as well and helping companies achieve some of these predictive types of things. Um, our predictive maintenance solution is an Internet of Things solution, and it uses embedded artificial intelligence and machine learning to help you know, be more proactive and prescriptive and predictive about maintenance based on the kinds of data that we can consume from data historians, whether that's being sent to us from OSI Pi, whether that's being sent through another SAP solution like MII, Manufacturing Integration and Intelligence, whether it's coming from an IP21 or, or some other PLC or DCS, we can interpret data and take that data, apply it to our machine learning algorithms. We have nine algorithms out of the box for both failure prediction and anomaly detection and help to determine some leading indicators for potential failure. Now this helps us to really be proactive and, and look ahead and preventing some of these things from occurring, you know, colossal downtimes or, or big slowdown events. Uh, intertwined with our predictive maintenance approach, you'll see a lot about this digital twin. This is a true digital representation of everything that's happening with this asset and um, and, and collecting all of that information together, whether it's documentation, whether it's tasks, whether it's history, whether it's current conditions or best practices as recommended by the manufacturer of the asset, you'll see it all in one place. Now quickly, SAP's portfolio for intelligent asset management looks like this. So you'll see 
Um, we're focused here on asset health prediction and optimization, um, kind of our asset performance management here. We also have other solutions in the same space, in the same portfolio for reliability-centered maintenance. That's our asset strategy and performance management solution. We also have an entire asset-focused network called the Asset Intelligence Network. This is a way for you as an operator of machinery or you as a manufacturer of, of you know, production machinery asset um, assets to collaborate with each other over the same network, really um, achieving that digital twin kind of all in one place. And you'll see an example of that when I get into the solution. Of course, all of this, you know, natively integrates and expands what exists there for the core day in the life maintenance. That's the identification, the planning, the scheduling, the execution, you know, closing and analyzing the day-to-day -day workflow of maintenance that exists within core SAP ERP. Um, so this is all natively leveraging those integrations into the core workflow, which really makes all this simpler depending on no matter what user you are, whether you're a maintenance technician, whether you're a liability engineer or a maintenance planner, everything can be found in one place and everything makes that workflow much simpler for you. All right, so from here, I'll hop into a quick demo scenario and uh, we'll, we'll put on the hat here of a reliability engineer. And the reliability engineer is going to take some indicators and, and alerts. It's going to look across asset health, determine what assets are um, getting leading indicators of potential failure, we're going to go and explore those assets and really try to understand what's going on, looking at failure modes, looking at different documentation and things, and then um, triggering an action, right? It, insights are great, but it's that insight to action that makes this truly powerful for a user. So triggering an action, whether that's a notification or um, you know, staying some maintenance, maybe we don't need to perform maintenance as soon as we had the next one scheduled. We'll make those decisions as we go through the demo. All right. Let me go full screen here as I hop into my system. So this is SAP predictive maintenance. And for those of you who have seen a predictive maintenance demo or really in any SAP demo in the last I would say four or five years, you'll notice that every SAP solution has the same look and feel. This is our Fiori user experience. And if you learn nothing else today, Fiori means a uh, beautiful flower in Italian. So I guess that's where we got it from. But the idea is this is a consumer grade user experience, a consumer grade look and feel. So it's quickly to search at the top across any area and quickly find whatever you'd like to see. You've got embedded help to help you navigate through. You can change any of the order of these tiles or add new tiles. Each one of these tiles is a link to a different report or transaction or dashboard or something like that. They can even link to external systems. So this is truly a one-stop shop. And um, you'll notice here at the top, I have these arranged in different, uh, different role-based um, kind of processes here. So we can look at analytics or processes. We can go down to the machine learning and, and better understand some of that. We can hide these and really make this homepage our own. You'll notice this across any SAP solution and predictive maintenance is no different. But we're putting on the hat of a reliability engineer and we just wanna understand what our fleet of assets looks like right now. We're gonna launch into our dashboard, uh, which is showing our, our real-time equipment indicator data. And this is gonna be really key because right out of the gate, we have a dashboard which displays not only real-time sensor data, you can see bearing temperature and inflow temperature for a couple pumps here, but we have a health score. So across all of my pumps in one location, I'm looking across, you know, all models or, or this particular model of all pumps in this location across multiple locations. And I have this sorted by my bad actor pumps. So this is an easy way for me to immediately see a color-coded, um, guide to how my fleet of assets that I'm responsible for are doing. And I've got that bad actor right there at the top. So that's going to be the subject of today's demo. We're going to dive into pump 554. We're going to try to understand what's contributing to that low health score. And we can see some other things too. We'll be able to go in here and, and get some additional information. So I'm going to pop open that pump 554. And that's going to take me to the page for pump 554. Now this is a serialized asset. And this is showing me um, exactly what's going on. So this is, uh, looks like my indicator data is not loading. So let's flip back over here. 
This is essentially my Facebook page for this asset. It's here in my environment. You know, only only me at my company, I, I'm able to see this. Only my company is able to see this. But there are certain pieces of information here that could be sent to me, sent to me over this network from the manufacturer or from the OEM or from the uh, third party service uh, you know, partner that I have uh, for a service level agreement. So this is a truly network approach to maintaining this specific pump. And for that matter, all of the pumps that I have and that I'm monitoring in this system in a really proactive way. So on the left hand side, you'll see that functional location structure. You'll see exactly where this sits. This could be pulled in directly from preventative maintenance. Uh, uh, from uh, the plant maintenance solution in core ERP, if you've got SAP today. So that native integration there shows me exactly where this sits. And I can quickly jump to any one of these locations or sub-assemblies that I have here, the uh, uh, equipment bill of material that I have underneath here, and go and check out some of those sub-assemblies, some of those spare parts that I can track in the system too, in a really visual way, easy, easy way for me to visualize this. But before we get to the monitoring to better understand what's going on, I, I want to show you a few things and um, we'll, we'll get a good understanding of what's going on with this pump so that by the time I get to monitoring, I have a, a, a good indication of where some of those alerts are being generated from. So I notice at the top, I've got a few things. I can see that this is connected. I can see that this is a critical asset, which is one of the reasons that we have this predictive model set up to monitor some of those alerts. I can see that the risk score is pretty high. I can see that the action is to take reliability centered maintenance on it. Um, I can see that, you know, I've got this color coded as well. This is delivering some of these reliability centered maintenance practices from our asset strategy and performance management solution. Now it's right here. It's, it's, it's all within one area, but I can quickly see, you know, all kinds of things directly from one place. Oops, didn't mean to click over. Just wanted to show you the, the drop down here. So right now we're on the home page. We're looking at just the data sheet, but I can see some of those um, risk and criticality, FMEA, different checklists, RCM assessments, and things like that directly from one place. So these are kind of high level master data type information. I can see the data sheet. I can see what information has come from the equipment level and what information has come from the model level. So there behind the scenes here is a whole asset taxonomy and way for me to manage and codify assets in a parent-child relationship in a really streamlined way so that all of my serialized pieces of equipment, I'm able to track them and, and monitor information against them. So I've got model level information, I've got equipment level information. You can see that IoT sync through the MQTT gateway via the cloud. I can see things like the installation date, build date, manufacturer part number, uh, we're tracking the serial number at the model level, any business partners or service level agreements that I have set up, you know, sales organization who, who I purchased this from. This is really the true digital twin. You know, when I say Facebook page, it's kind of tongue in cheek, but I can really see everything that I want to track about this particular asset. Some of this information is coming from what I already have on the equipment master data page in SAP. Some of this data is coming, you know, externally from the OEM or from the vendor or the manufacturer. And some of this is, you know, being generated right here. I, I've got things like installation information. I've got life cycle information. So I can monitor, you know, predecessor model, successor model directly from the vendor. That's being delivered to me via the asset intelligence network. So here easily I can see end of technical support, end of calibration support, uh, end of spare parts support, that kind of thing. So I can begin to do some obsolescence planning directly from here. And I'm making a big deal about all these little things that we can track within this one page, because of course, if we can track them within this one page for this one asset, we can do this at scale. We can track all of our you know, support timelines for all of our assets and all of our models um, at a really high level. So you know, we're, we're zoomed in on the granular level, but this is really powerful when you, when you think about this at scale. Maybe we're not just monitoring one site, we're monitoring a dozen sites. And we need to run campaigns to do replacements or, you know, to update or retrofit certain pieces of equipment. We can do that and monitor all that from here. That, that's what makes us really powerful. Speaking of at scale, we can also group these. We can add them to different systems and things like that. So we can monitor these in different ways. There really is a truly powerful taxonomy behind the scenes here. Um, so 
Um, a couple other things, we'll just quickly look at the structure and the spare parts. You saw that on the left-hand side for the functional location structure, but if I zoom into the structure, we can see those spare parts. We can see um, comments or manufacturer uh, part number that these are pulled in from. We can even link to you know the shopping network, whether that's a Reba or a um, Hybris or another third party um, network, we can punch out directly and make sure that we always have spare parts uh, on hand that, that are needed here. Let's jump through the documentation as well. This, this is really makes this powerful. When you talk about documentation, a lot of uh, documentation today for this kind of equipment is kept on a DMS system, whether that's an engineering DMS, whether that's, you know, something like a Microsoft SharePoint, or whether it's an open text or something like that, one of the Adobe solutions. There's a lot of ways to track documents today, technical drawings, documents, PNIDs, uh, best practices, you know, blueprints and things like that. But our aim here is to be able to track all of that in one place. And SAP is not trying to own where those documents are stored. You, you'll notice that we can sto store those documents directly here in the solution, but we can also track URLs. So we can store them in an external system and just link them here. So right out of the gate, that makes this a very simple way to collect you know, all kinds of document types and really make this a true one-stop shop for all of my documentation, no matter what that documentation is, whether it's drawings, whether it's safety instructions, um, you know, different operational phases and things like that. We have these .vds files, which is an SAP proprietary file. It's basically a lightweight CAD file. So you can view this in truly a, a 3D fashion. It's a 3D visual enterprise viewer file. So you can open that up, you know, spin it around, animate it and add layover steps and things like that. I'll show you that here in just a minute. But we can really track all of this in one place. And back to my demo story, this really helps me as a reliability engineer, understanding that I have an alert for a low health score. Once I determine what's generating that low health score, I can come here and quickly see what, what documents I need to include with the work package so that the time to repair is quick and safe and accurate, right? I, I can pass that information on along to my maintenance planner, to my maintenance technician, because it's all linked here directly in one place. So this is incredibly powerful. This, this adds a lot of value. Speaking of value, um, we have some of these animated instructions and things like this. So if I go to say a bearing disassembly steps, let's, uh, let's open this up and take a look. So this is actually uh, basically a task list. This is showing me um, steps to be taken to a complete a bearing disassembly. This is at the model level and I can, I can revise these and there's a whole um, operational cadence for me to um, keep track of these or pull these in from the manufacturer or the vendor. But these are my steps. I've got tools and spare parts linked. I've got documents. I've got expected work. Now this is just uh, basically a view only, right? I'm not doing the maintenance execution here with this screen. This is just tracking this. This is collecting this all in one place really at a, at a, you know, 100% data level. I'm just trying to be very completionist and making sure all my data is in one place. So this is essentially what would be sent over to the maintenance technician, these steps and, and spare parts and documents and things like that. Uh, but the technician can pull this up too and can go through here and see all the long text and see all the safety rules, you know, in a very visual way. So they know exactly what should be done. These are the requirements of the job and as a reliability engineer or even a maintenance planner, this is crucial for me to determine, you know, what's needed on hand, what's needed from an expertise standpoint, and to quickly put together an accurate and safe maintenance package. You can see I've also got some failure modes here as well and some checklist templates and things. So we've got this linked overheating bearing to a failure mode. If it's overheating, it might need a quick disassembly and a cleaning or a quick replacement uh, of that bearing or a repair if a repair is possible. So this is the kind of 2D version of the, the steps, right? I have, uh, you know, written out steps and things like that. We can also look at the 3D version of these steps. So this is that visual enterprise, you know, 3D um, look and feel that I was talking about. That's that um, basically a lightweight CAD file. 
So we can animate these. We can add um, kind of overlay text and safety instructions and make sure you have your, you know, your hot, cold permits, your hot, cold gear, um, you know, make sure to protect against static electricity, things like that. Um, we can overlay those kind of instructions and, and um, steps and safety instructions as well. So this is uh, one way that we can navigate through this and, you know, check, click any one of these, um, kind of spin this around and, and get a really good understanding of exactly what needs to be done. Okay, so that's a little bit for the work package that we might want to put together once we send a technician to, um, to form, to perform a, a quick repair or, um, or replacement. The other thing we've got here are failure modes. This is being delivered to us with that sister solution, that asset strategy and performance management. We have deep failure mode tracking for reliability centered maintenance. You can see I've got a bunch of failure modes here for this pump. These could be at the, at the model level. This could be at the equipment level. So for this specific pump, these are some of the failure modes we have identified. It's key to be able to track all of these things because um, I might have lots of this model of pump across all of my various you know production facilities i might be tracking a dozen different plants i might be at the global level and i've got multiple dozens of plants with similar kinds of equipment we want to make sure that we're approaching maintenance in any in a standardized way so making these kind of things available and codifying what my organization has seen for failure modes in one system in one place so that all of the reliability leaders at each location have access to this standardized center of excellence kind of data is, is huge. It's, it's the way that SAP approaches this and allows companies to standardize all of this data all in one place. And that makes it much simpler for each user to communicate with each other, to you know, access the global standards in a really streamlined, user-friendly kind of way. All right, so we won't spend too long here. I want to hop over to monitoring, and I want to make sure if, if some of my alert data is coming through. And unfortunately, it looks like it's not, so I, I apologize. I've been building to this alert monitoring. But we'll talk a little bit about some indicator data. And I want to open up and show all of the indicators that we're able to track on this pump. And I apologize because it looks like my, my link broke, and, it's not, my, and my demo system is not showing some of those uh, right now. So that's unfortunate. But... I've got a lot of different indicators that I can track against this specific equipment. And you'll notice that some of these are measured and some of these are calculated. I have different scores and things like that, whether it's a risk, whether it's, you know, risk prioritization number or, or some of these other things, inflow temperature. And some of these are, you know, manually assessed. So connection status, not looking great. We'll have to double check on that. But some of my favorites that I had saved here, um, which we're generating some of those alerts. We've got inflow temperature, we've got oil level, and we've got bearing temperature. And then based off of some of those, we have a principal component analysis, a principal component algorithm running, a PCA algorithm running, which is generating our health score. And this is based off of a multidimensional analysis of a few of these indicators that are coming in. So it's not just simple condition-based maintenance, although we can do condition-based maintenance with this tool. It is multidimensional. It's understanding, you know, with regard to both the inflow and the bearing temperature, what both of those might be operating completely within our upper and lower limits, completely normal conditions or appears to be normal conditions, hasn't crossed the threshold. But according to different dips and movements that we've seen here, maybe some of those micro movements, when combined together across those dimensions, are determining or indicating a, a leading indicator of potential failure or some sort of anomaly that's important enough for us to trigger some kind of action. And I wish I could show you this here, but it looks like it's not going to display for me. Um, what we're able to display here are time series across, you know, however long back we want to go to better understand that data that's being pushed to us from the data historian, whether it's OSI Pi or IP21 or another data historian, we're able to see that here and and see those dips and scan in and, and see those alerts for when those alerts are being generated. So we have some of those alerts here. What alert has been triggered here, which is generating this low health score, is an overheating bearing alert. And I've, I've actually, what should be showing here are three alerts over the last seven days. Um, I can better understand those on the chart. Unfortunately, I'm not able to show you that, but 
if we go over to maintenance and service, we're able to see that the history for this pump. And we're also able to see the upcoming scheduled maintenance and things like that for this pump. This is being pulled in from SAP plant maintenance. So again, that native integration, huge benefit allows me to see everything in one place. We can see um, any tickets or any, you know, open progress work orders, things like that. I can see notifications that have been generated. Uh, one was generated uh, almost a week ago for this overheating bearing. We can see that um, the status is new. It's not been it's not been acted on yet. We can also go down and see these work orders. So I can see I have upcoming work or preventative maintenance for um, you know upcoming on December second. Maybe this this um, new alert lets me know that something has to be done before then. So I can make the determination here based on when the last and, and future maintenance packages are being done, you know, what needs to be done here. And kind of wrapping this up very simply, I can go and create a new maintenance alert or a new maintenance notification. Now, of course, anything I can do manually here, I can trigger automatically any of these rules that we have set up for generating these alerts could automatically create this maintenance notification in SAP plant maintenance could go on and, you know, update a counter or update a measuring point for a maintenance plan in the system. And that triggers whatever that maintenance flow is. Um, so we can really automate this and, and that helps us go from reactive to pro proactive in a very simple way. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and trigger this maintenance notification manually just to show uh, we've got an emergency alert we'll say overheating bearing make sure I'm spelling correctly but what I can do here and this is building on what I've showed you already for some of that documentation we can add those failure modes and we can add those instructions so this is shortcutting this it's giving me a ton of information as I hand the baton here to the um, to the maintenance planner the maintenance planner now has a ton of information to begin putting together a, a, an accurate work package. Or if it truly is emergency, maybe this notification gets dispatched directly to the maintenance technician. And now they already know what tools and spare parts they need to have on hand, what safety equipment they need to have on hand, and they can go take action very quickly. So it's speeding up the accuracy and the time to repair here while keeping it very simple and collaborative between all of the different users. So let's go ahead and add that failure mode there and assign it. We can also add an instruction here. Uh, we've got multiple instructions to choose from. We'll say those bearing dis, uh, disassembly steps from before. And um, we'll go ahead and say the required start date is today. It's emergency. That's going to shortcut based on my priority. And we can go ahead and create this. And what this does is creates that maintenance notification in SAP. And it updates my list here. So now I have really a one-stop shop, one source of the truth. We've ticked that, tipped that domino of workflow in the SAP workflow system so that, you know, the various users will get their workflow notifications and know exactly what needs to be done. So really to round this off, there's a lot of information that we can track here. It's very powerful. We can truly use some of these machine learning algorithms. And just uh, quickly on that, let me show you. We can use some of these machine learning algorithms to even determine um, based out of the text that we're monitoring in our various notifications, which failure modes are more common with this pump compared to the other pumps in the same model across all 200 series pumps. So we notice that this is truly a bad actor pump, that it overheats 10 times more than other pumps of its class and pump leaking, intermittent flow, it's other failure modes, we can really see a bird's eye view of how this compares to other pumps in its same class. And so um, we can also track things like leading indicators and the strength of those leading indicators based on the machine learning algorithms and the, the sensor data that's being fed through the algorithms. So we notice that the average inflow temperature is a, a highly um, indicative sensor for uh, detecting if the bearing is going to overheat or not. It's, it's literally a one-to-one, -one, so that's a very accurate sensor. We can also see some of these other ones. We can even go and do some condition-based monitoring here based on some of the rules and the condition strength that we have set up.
So there's a lot that can be done here. There's a whole lot more to the solution. This was just intended to be a quick high level overview of some of the things that we can track and uh, wanted to give you a sense of what some of these things look like and how we can really put all this together, make reliability centered maintenance and predictive maintenance very simple from a user standpoint and um, you know, no data scientists required. We can really package this together in a nice way to um, pass this along through and, and improve maintenance and take it um, up that maintenance maturity curve. So from there, I'll stop sharing. Uh, that wraps up our demo. I know that we've gotten a few questions, I think, and uh, we'll, we'll hand it over to Srikant, who will take you through some key takeaways before we open it up for Q&A. Srikant? Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. That was very, very informative. I appreciate that. Uh, let me get me my screen sharing going. There we go. Okay. So thanks a lot. That was a great demo. I'll tell you honestly, I also learned a uh, few new things today. Every day there is something new. So, um, so it's an, uh, again, I'm Shrikant, and uh, I would like to uh, build up on what uh, Jordan just uh, walked us through. <clears throat> so I would like to talk about, <clears throat> I'm sorry, excuse me, a couple of success stories. And uh, um, so Jordan, a deep dive into uh, the predictive maintenance part. I would like to talk about a little bit, take a step back and talk about a little bit broader about uh, what are the steps in EAM, how uh, we map, um, help you to determine where you are into the uh, EAM maturity curve. So first uh, uh, success story is about a uh, pharmaceutical or a manufacturing organization who implemented preventive facilities, calibration and warehouse management solution. Now, of course, we are not talking about warehouse, but uh, that's another solution which was implemented uh, with uh, Zebra hardware, so tablets and mobile devices, printers and so forth. <clears throat> so uh, I'm, I'm just gonna take a step back. And when we talk about the system of record, we talk about equipment, masters, bombs, spares, right? Order processing, calibration, breakdown, corrective facility. This is just a high level processes and the master data. And that's where the ERP comes into picture. So if you are using SAP and uh, you're using plant maintenance, great. But uh, if you are not, uh, and if you are moving to S4, this is a great opportunity because there is so much new into the uh, EAM space now SAP has brought to uh, a level where you can um, take you, yourself through or your organization through this maturity curve much faster. So um, looking at the EAM and the plant maintenance, um, or if you have uh, customer facing work, then uh, you'll use service management part of it too. Then comes the uh, data acquisition. Right? So once we have system in place, we want to make sure that we, act, we, get, uh, we capture the data at source, wherever it is. And there are several components involved. And the first one is the mobility. Um, if you have needs uh, based upon your business process, you might need offline. Most of the maintenance applications are offline. You want to make sure you have right information on the mobile device and uh, people can carry out work while they are not worried about the connectivity. You want to make sure that it's real time. So uh, any data capture get processed and you have financial implications of that instantaneously, uh, including your inventory, uh, project management, and impact on the financial, and also printing out in the field. So that's our workforce management. Uh, there are different solutions available. So asset manager, calibration, uh, rounds manager. So there are different solutions available from SAP and a partner like us. The next is once you have um, the, the you know, system of record, you are collecting the data, you want to make sure you are analyzing that data and also uh, making the best out of it. So that's where the RCM, reliability centered maintenance, failure mode and effect analysis, and, and Jordan talked about that some of it uh, earlier in the demo, uh, risk-based inspections and root cause analysis. You want to make sure that we do that uh, and that's where the performed risk and strategy assessment and SAP has a module uh, asset performance, asset strategy and performance management, 
which basically uh, fits between uh, the ERP and the predictive maintenance uh, for the acquisition and analysis purpose. Then comes uh, another way of acquiring data is the IoT. So if you have IoT enabled uh, devices or equipment uh, or even getting data from SCADA, uh, we can collect that information. And finally, uh, if you are into um, the device manufacturing or using devices from specific manufacturers, you can use the, uh, you can collaborate for better information using asset intelligence network. And that also helps you to collect the information. So now you have acquired the data, you started the, uh, and you need to do analysis. So this analysis, uh, whatever we have done uh, as a part of the initial analysis as a part of the performance, uh, perform risk and strategy assessment gets fed into the predictive analytics. And that's what uh, Jordan talked about in depth. And then once we have that analyzed, uh, and we have uh, recommendations and corrective actions that gets fed back into the mobile solution. So this is kind of an end-to-end loop. Uh, so you, this this helps you to find out where you are into the maturity curve and, and how these all different SAP and the partner solutions are like. So I have next slide talks about a little bit about the, uh, the lining up of different solutions. So we talked about the process. So you can have scheduling, dispatch. Um, if you have field service, then map-based dispatch and tracking for so GUI enablement, planning workbench for your planners, approvals of the notifications and work order based upon different criteria, and then the mobility out in the field right? and the backend completion. So uh, this is just a sample of one of the screens, but these are the different tools available, MRSS, uh, and then there are Fury-based solutions. These are the solutions from uh, Crave Infotech, uh, which is a white space in case of SAP. And then Asset Manager, Calibration, and FSM. These are the solutions from uh, SAP Stack. And we have lined up how we can help as a partner. So uh, when we come in, we basically uh, help you. The first step is to do the, um, do the analysis of where you are on to the uh, EAM maturity curve and how, what is next? What are your quick wins? How we can help you? Uh, so we basically look at end to end uh, backend. So ERP, so plant maintenance, service management, and then AI and so asset intelligence network, strategy and performance, predictive maintenance. And also we do barcode and RFID enablement. So when we come in, we do basically end to end. And finally, some of our solutions which are white space planning workbench, work clearance work management, flexible scheduling and dispatch, and asset inventory and inspection. Those are uh, our solutions which are already available onto the SAP App Store too. This is uh, a little bit crowded, uh, but a diagram which illustrates the asset intelligence network solutions available. Um, <clears throat> Jordan already touched upon PDMS and he has done a great job. But it starts with, so if you look at the holistically, the asset central is the foundation. You can define the taxonomy. You can define the model, the structure uh, of the uh, assets. So uh, you basically bring in the subset of your assets data or equipment data from plant maintenance uh, in, our, in our core system into the asset central and then built upon it. Uh, and important is the asset intelligence network or asset central can also bring data from non-SAP plant maintenance solutions too. So you can have hybrid of those bringing in data from different, it can be ECC, it can be S4, or it can be non-SAP ERP system. So you can have one central repository. And then we have this four uh, key. So you have three key modules, the AIN, the PDMS, ASPM, and then you have digital manufacturing cloud, which helps you to integrate with several other external systems and constituents. Uh, this is just a uh, screenshot uh, outlining the SAP asset manager. That's a mobile application, uh, which has now, uh, which is a cloud-based, uh, very well laid out, uh, geo enabled, uh, AI integration with the uh, asset intelligence network, PDMS, ASPM, 
so out of the box most of the functionalities are available and now it also uh, comes um, as inbuilt functionality for the signature capture so you meet the regulatory requirements too this is the diagram which ta uh, basically uh, flow about the asset strategy and performance management so you have uh, reliability centered maintenance so where we come into and add value is rcm is always used to be difficult and haven't been very successful because there was no feedback loop available uh, from any rcm tool into sap and that has now uh, kind of resolved almost resolved with aspm uh, so you have not only you can model um, the rcm analysis into your into the aspm so you can model the uh, uh, the rcm uh, requirements or the parameters and then analyze them and put the bring the feedback back into sap so we have basically created several rcm models for several equipments like um, like e pumps uh, valves and then drives escalators uh, transformers if it is a utility transformers um, switch gear circuit breakers and those are available out of the box that is not uh, so sap provides framework we bring that ip and the uh, and the um, industry experience and provide you a starting point in case of rcm and then then you use that into the failure mode and effect analysis root cause analysis and if uh, you have a need you can also use into risk based inspections i think uh, jordan did a great job showing that directly into uh, the system itself but there is a lot of uh, available into the augmented reality bots and machine learning area so finally uh, what we are passionate about as crave infotech so we bring in asset intelligence uh, uh, sap uh, intelligent enterprise so that's our ecc or s4 a uh, lot of our prepackaged solutions and then we combine that with mobile computing rfid location services geo enablement and integrating with the external uh, uh, systems and the different different systems of sap and help you to have one uh, cohesive comprehensive solution uh, into warehouse enterprise asset management field service and supply chain uh, and also rpa this is list of some of our customers oil and gas utilities life sciences manufacturing um, energy chemical and uh, uh, petrochemical and and companies like siemens retail and manufacturing like comscope they are uh, high tech manufacturing so we have uh, biotech paper mill we have subset of different customers uh, global presence this is you will get this deck this is a list of all of our ui ux apps uh, they are available on the app store if you have any interest we can definitely talk finally i want to touch about what we have done just to make it uh, traditionally you know um, it's always question how difficult it's going to be implement how long it will take what's the cost so we have worked with sap and we have created we call amplify packages and they define the scope so for example asset manager package it basically talks about how what we can do in a very fixed price for example we have asset manager package for between cost between 45 to 50 uh, uh, k us dollar we will implement we can implement within 12 weeks and this is the scope so notification processing order processing inspection uh, round geo specific uh, special information equipment view and history and this is what we configure so we have uh, the amplify packages with a predefined scope for asset manager uh, calibration then asset performance and collaboration so that's basically complete ain that includes uh, intelligent ain um strat asset strategy and performance management and predictive maintenance and the, we have defined a specific scope around that so we have several packages already available um so if you have any questions reach out to us and we'll be happy to help you to walk you through defining where you are into the maturity curve and how we can help you to advance through the maturity curve together uh with that we can open for q and a let me see Yeah, we had one 
uh, one person asked about if we are using Maximo, can we use Maximo to send asset data to the solution? The answer is is yes. Uh, it yeah. doesn't require a backend SAP plant maintenance system in order to run this solution, this predictive maintenance asset strategy and performance management, or even the asset intelligence network. These are all cloud solutions and they exist in the cloud. So if you're using another CMMS or EAM system as a backend, this can be a really powerful addition to whatever your maintenance workflow system is. And you can send data into this from those other third-party backend systems. Yes. And Jordan, honestly, I'll tell you, I'm doing this for the last 25 years. Um, and in EAM space for 30 now, and this is what we used to dream for because we had to go somewhere else um, and and uh, um, try to find out solutions which gives that end-to-end -end solution. Now we have it. So uh, this is very exciting, definitely. I think we have another question coming in. Uh, chat. Okay. Is the package cost for our entire enterprise SAP instance? Um, yes. Yes. So, of course, we have um, um, certain parameters we have defined from the scope perspective, uh, but yes, for that scope. Uh, yes, Anand. And if you have specific questions, we can, uh, you can share your details and we can um, follow up and have uh, very specific. So typically, uh, you know, what we would like to do is uh, if, if this is interesting for you, and if you want to know more, we can have a 30 minutes of no obligation, quick call. We also do a no obligation um, evaluation and help you to determine where you are in the maturity curve and see uh, what are the options available. That also uh, as an option for you. Regarding metrics such as MTT or MTWeb, is the breakdown info coming from the census or from a notification? So, um, so of course, great question. Uh, so, MTTR, MTBF, these are these these metrics. Uh, they basically built upon the data available uh, from different sources, not just from the census or not just from the completion. They will build upon um, the information available from all the sources. Um, so that will be completion of the orders, completion of notifications, sensors, uh, the preventive maintenance information, all of that will be uh, utilized to calculate those both. I know it takes time to type. When I'm doing attending webinar, I like to rush. So if, feel free to type if you have any more questions, we'll stay for a couple more minutes. And, and Jordan, uh, I do have one question about the predictive maintenance. Uh, what type of uh, uh, what type of uh, models are already available, Jordan? And what what uh, how easy or uh, how practical is to tune them for specific use case in the predictive maintenance side? Yeah, so it's a good question. We deliver nine models out of the box, uh, nine algorithms out of the box for both failure prediction and anomaly detection. And uh, two of those are SAP specific or SAP proprietary for auto anomaly detection and auto failure prediction. And those are probably the most powerful ones because those don't require a backlog of lots of failure data. That's always kind of a next step question. Well, we don't have a lot of sensor data. We don't have a lot of failure data. We've only started collecting sensor data and failure data over the last six months or over the last 18 months or something like that. How can I begin to do some of these things for critical bottleneck assets without having a huge mountain of downtime data or failure data? And my answer would be with these two algorithms that SAP delivers, it allows you to start off um, with a, a relatively high degree of accuracy and because it's a machine learning model, it, it runs both supervised and unsupervised. So if it's unsupervised, as you're collecting new data, it can use those to detect anomalies and predict failures as you go along. And uh, 
this means that it learns over time and becomes more powerful over time. So you start off with a relatively high degree of accuracy. You don't require, we don't require data scientists to be able to even fine tune these algorithms out of the gate. If you already have some additional parameters, <clears throat> you can tweak these out of the gate to make them even more accurate out of the gate. But within three months, within six months, as you collect more data, they only become more powerful. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Anand, very good question. So the intelligent asset management is, uh, is the uh, cloud-based solution and uh, uh, irrespective of your backend, whether it's a ECC or an S4 or uh, uh, another third-party system, they will have the same user interface what Jordan has demonstrated, the Fury interface. Uh, so it, the interface, uh, what we have demoed today, is not dependent upon the backend system. That's right. And even more important, those, those core objects within even R3 and those, those core tables for you know, pulling up maintenance plans and equipment master data and maintenance orders and things like that, those core objects are the linkage points which can feed data into this new system with the newer UI. So that remains unchanged and still powerful integration there, whether you're on S4 HANA or ECC or even R3 or a, another third party like Maximo or N4. Okay. Excellent. That was good interaction. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? Is it web-based? Yeah, it is. When you say web-based, it's Fury, right? So it's a cross-platform, uh, yep, cross-platform and UI5 mobile enabled, so you can access from anywhere. Yeah, I will not call it web-based, but it's a cross-platform, um, uh, so it's a Fury, so you can access from anywhere. Yep. Thanks for the questions, Anand. Okay, very good. So I know we are uh, uh, over time. Thank you for staying on. And thank you, Jordan, for your excellent demo and insight. Appreciate. And uh, please reach out to us. And we'll be happy to help you and bring in SAP wherever needed and see how we can help you to mature through the EM maturity curve. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.